Hello everybody, I'm Andrea, AKA Mrs. C. And today I'm going to teach you all how to make Jen Stark inspired pumpkins. Now, who is Jen Stark? She is a contemporary American artist. For those of you who don't know what it means, contemporary is an artist who is still working and living today. Now, she is most popular because her artwork is very multicolored and has a lot of layers and looks psychedelic. Now, psychedelic is when something looks like it comes out of a dream and steps away from realism, but tries to capture what someone would find or see in a distorted dreamlike state. Now, she was inspired to use a lot of colors when she was young because when she was an artist studying out of the country, she didn't have a lot of money for art supplies, so she would opt for cheap, colorful construction paper, which we see a lot of in her artwork. She makes mixed media artwork or artwork that uses a lot of different art supplies and not just one type. She will have artwork that is on the side of buildings. She will make hanging installation art or art that will be on display in galleries for a limited time. And she'll also do set design. She actually did set design for Miley Cyrus for one of her shows. And since then, her career has only gone upward. Now, the elements of art that I want us to look at in her artwork are line and color. What kinds of lines do we see in her artwork? Probably wiggly and wavy lines. However, they're not an even wave. Some of the waves look longer or shorter or wider or narrower than others, so she can create that dripping effect. She also uses various colors in her artwork that really makes her artwork stand out from whatever background or area she is putting her work on display in. Now, looking at the principles of art or what you get when you combine any number of the elements of artwork, we're gonna take a look at pattern and movement. What is pattern? Pattern, that's when any one or more elements of art are repeated in, in a certain way. You could repeat lines, you could repeat colors, you could repeat symbols, and we often see patterns in random places like maybe on someone's t-shirt or on wallpaper. Now, movement, that's when you create the impression that something is moving on a piece of paper or any surface. Now, with movement, think about where the drips and the lines in Jen Stark's drip art are going. They all seem to be moving downward. So that's how movement plays a pretty big role in her artwork. Now, the jack-o'-lanterns that we're gonna be making for this project are positive and negative space art. For those of you who don't know what this is, positive and negative space artwork is where you create a whole image by first drawing half of it, and then you cut it out. That includes any features or details that you have on the inside of the shape you made, and then you flip it on the other side of the paper. So this way your image looks symmetrical, except the colors are flipped. Like in this picture you see of a jack-o'-lantern, one side of the jack-o'-lantern is black and has an orange background, while on the other side the jack-o'-lantern is orange and has a black background. For this project, you are going to need various colorful pieces of paper that are eight and a half by 11 inches, maybe more if that's what you want. And then you are going to need a sheet of white paper that is eight and a half by five and a half inches. This is because this white piece of paper is going to make half of your pumpkin. And then you're going to need scissors, glue sticks. If you have liquid glue bottles, that's okay. However, glue sticks are a lot less messy. And you're going to need pencils, erasers, sharpeners, and various colorful Sharpies or markers. Now let's find a comfortable place to work and get started. We're gonna draw half of our pumpkin on the white piece of paper by drawing half of an oval. That's gonna be the middle. Now remember, the taller your oval is, the taller your pumpkin's going to be. Now I'm going to draw what looks like half of an oval that is peeking out from behind that pumpkin. You wanna make sure that these half ovals that are going to make your pumpkins wider and wider are about the same size. Now I'm going to draw what looks kind of like an upside down L, but you wanna make the back of the L curved to make half of your stem. Then you wanna get a pair of scissors and you are going to cut out half of your pumpkin. I had an accident with the first half of my pumpkin, so I had to trace and recut that. 
Now, do we see a face in the pumpkin? Not really, we're gonna draw jack-o'-lantern faces. You can do yours differently, but what I did was I drew a capital D that was tipped to make kind of a spooky jack-o'-lantern eye, and then I drew two zigzag lines and pinched them together where the corner of the mouth would be. Now I'm going to take my scissors and carefully cut out that mouth. Please do take your time when you are cutting so that you are less likely to make mistakes. You'll have to cut through the face to get the eye out, but that's okay. Just make it a single cut because it's going to look like one piece again after we glue down the half of the face right here. Now, here's where our glue sticks come in. You're gonna take your glue stick everywhere you want it to be smoothed down flat and not loosey-goosey, you need to put glue. Now I'm going to take the mouth and the eye and I'm going to glue them on the opposite side just as they would be. I would suggest that you put glue where you want it to go on the paper because if you put glue on the back of the eye and the mouth, they might get your fingers very sticky. It's your choice if you think you can carefully put glue on the back of your features for your jack-o'-lantern without getting too much glue on your hands. Now it's time to start drawing the drip patterns like what Jen Stark has. I'm gonna start at the top and draw a wavy line that just keeps coming down. Remember, they're not even, but you want whatever drip line you just made to be repeated in the layer that you have above or below it. There we go. We want to see these drips in layers. You're going to make, I'd say one area that's maybe the size of your hand an entire drip area where you're gonna have the same pattern of drips and then you're gonna have them have this very particular theme with the colors. They could be black and white colors or they could be all cool colors or you could be repeating the colors of the rainbow in that drip. Now notice how some of the drips, they look like they're peeking out from behind the others. That's something I want you to practice doing. Really layer those different drip areas. Once you are done, you're gonna take your black Sharpies and outline all of your drips. I also suggest that you outline the shape of your eyes and your mouths and your pumpkins to really make the features in your artwork stand out. Remember, you don't have to make a spooky jack-o'-lantern face like what I did. You can make a cute cat face or a happy jack-o'-lantern face or even a spooked out kind of face. I want you to really have fun with whatever jack-o'-lantern face you make, but they are going to be pumpkins. And then you will take your Sharpies or whatever coloring supplies you are picking, and you are going to color your drips. Try not to repeat the same pattern of colors all the time. I went between having nature colors or all cool colors or all rainbow colors with the different areas in my jack-o'-lantern picture. Just have fun and you'll really love how the colors pop out in this project. 